Um, he is part of the Naked series, including Naked New York, Los Angeles, London, and Las Vegas. Also, he's the subject of the Showtime documentary, Strip. Thank you very much for coming on. I Welcome to the broadcast. And if I'm not mistaken, you're a former CU grad yourself. Yep, I was here many, many years ago. But uh, So strolling through the campus uh, while you were coming up here, did, did it... Has, is it changed? Is it still much the same? Same type uh, of kind well, of genre of crowd, or um, obviously well, the, younger? The, yeah, the crowd's. No, I mean, it's not younger. It's the same age. It's right. just younger to me. Right. Um, <laughs> no, the the crowd looks really hip and and neat. And um, it was interesting to see where the old art building was is demolished, and they have a humongous new art and art history building, which looks gorgeous. Um, I always love the architecture here. They they do such a, a really classy job with it. Well, was it your time here spent at CU? Did that kind of give you the foundation for going into photography there as well? I took a ton of pictures when I was here, mm -hmm. but I didn't major in it. I, I was a political science and French major okay. <laughs> and made sure I got a pretty, you know, cross the board good uh, degree in education and uh, spent part of my junior year abroad in Paris and uh, spoke a little bit of French and worked in fashion photography. So I pursued it really, really, uh, really, really feverishly, but I didn't major in it, and I took a few classes. So would you say when you were over in that time in Paris, would that may have, and working maybe in the fashion industry, did that kind of lay the foundation for your future work, um, working with models and nudes and everything like that? No, it, it just opened my, my eyes to a whole different world, you know, the world of fashion photography, which is, you know, a commercial world. There there are some people in, you know, in fashion photography that do it that are purely artists, mm -hmm. which, which I totally love. Um, no, after CU Boulder, I, I spent a summer in New Orleans, which is where I'm from originally, and then went to uh, the Big Apple, went to New York City for three years of grad school, and that that totally prepped me for kind of what was to come. Okay. Once again, if you'd like to have a question for Greg there, you can email us at dj at radio1190.org. So why why nudes then as much uh, being as a, as a focus part of your work there? I know you do other things, but why nudes in general? Why nudes in general? Well... I mean, besides the obvious, I'm assuming there is. No, well. I mean... I I'm a big advocate of, of kind of being very clear about what you're doing mm -hmm. in, in art and in photography. And so some of the nudes I shoot, the more kind of erotic nudes are for erotica. Therefore, you know, whatever whatever that does for people. Um, the naked books are more of a really crazy uh, in-depth investigation into humanity right. and society. And you, you see someone clothed. And you see them how they are every day in society and in their public life, and then you see them naked, which is how they exist truly without their clothes. And then you get to make the comparison and see the kind of quote unquote whole person. Well, it seems it seems, and you can maybe correct me on my, if I, if I'm wrong, but from what I've got from uh, seeing the documentary and seeing some of your work, is that those the naked series is not necessarily about sexuality; it's more about kind of telling the story of somebody of like who's behind the clothes or who's behind the mask essentially you know or the mask being the clothes that we wear yeah mask is a good word um i think veneer is a good word too and that that's why i went to pursue it in vegas um no the, the naked projects um i had a lot of fun doing them i'm really not going to pursue them now but um the naked projects are about identity and it's about roles in society and how people are similar and how they're different and it has absolutely nothing to do with sexuality or eroticism but we live in a society that's so fucking repressed that you know when anyone in america sees anyone nude or naked they all automatically think crazy uh sex right eroticism etc and these books are not about that at all. Right. Well, how did Naked New York was your first book, if I'm correct. So where where did you kind of get the idea to do this series or come up with the first book in general? Well, I was um, in my second year of grad school in New York City, and I placed a tiny ad in the Village Voice. Uh, there was no Internet back then. This is 1995. And I placed a tiny ad, and I had no clue what I was doing. I thought I was going to shoot... Um, 
like a, a big um, inspiration of mine, like like Richard Avenatti. I thought I was just going to shoot some you know naked people in a studio with a white backdrop, but. I ended up getting 11 people from the Village Voice ad, and they came into the studio where I was in school, the School of Visual Arts in New York City, and I had them fill out a three-page document about what their life was like, what they did for work, wh how old they were, kids, no kids, religion, politics, whatever. And they left, and about two days later, I figured that what I was truly interested in was showing the whole person. I didn't want to just shoot them naked in a studio. And I found a very small, dingy corner of a friend's loft in, in Chelsea, which was still uh, kind of crazy and, and wild um, at that time. Now it's very, very clean and tame. Um, and so anyway, I'll just uh, continue. So... <clears throat> I lost track of where I was. Um, Sorry, you were you were talking about what you discovered, what you really wanted to do, yeah, and how I, you discovered I, I it. I figured with these 11 people that I needed to shoot them clothed as well as naked and label the photos according to what they do for a living and their age. And so it totally took on a new life, and I don't even know where that came from. But now I know that it, it totally came from my fascination with uh, society and how people are similar, how they're different how you may or may not be able to tell what someone is like at their core based on their job. Mm -hmm. um, the age is just kind of another bit of information. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm totally fascinated with that. I will be fascinated with that until the day I die. And almost every bit of work I produce, whether it's naked or not naked, nude, not nude, uh, delves into the to roles in society and identity and, and human existence. Well, you went through these series of books, and then this this documentary came about. How did that process happen? That process happened. I, w I went to do Naked London in 1999, and there was a documentary um, on public television on the BBC. And they, I spent uh, nine weeks there, and they followed me around for nine weeks, and we made a beautiful, great documentary, which was very different than the one that David Palmer did. Um, and so I had that in my arsenal, and I knew that Naked Las Vegas would be a brilliant piece, but I had to find the right person to make it. And I pursued a couple people I knew in, in Los Angeles who were filmmakers who I thought could do a good job with it. But those fell through, and um, I did what I often do. I, I placed a, an ad, which is which is uh, very scary because you get a lot of scary results. But I placed an ad on uh, Craigslist, and I got 19 people who were very, very interested. I whittled it down to 19 people.